Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 54 on compliant masks in the data display. In this video, you will learn how to work with compliance mask in the ADS data display. Also, we will look at techniques. How can we create compliance mask in this ADS schematic design and then optimize our circuit design based on the compliance mask. So pretty interesting tutorial, a lot of interesting content. So stay tuned till the end of the video. Before we start, subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell icon to enable all the notifications. And after you watch the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues. Now, again, like always, don't forget to leave your valuable comments in the comment section below this video. All right, let's get started and understand each of these topics one by one in little more detail. And I'm sure this will be very useful for your design applications. Now in ADS, our last tutorial, we did talk about compliance limits, how to insert these compliance limits into your data display. And then with a bunch of few equations, you can do uh, the verification whether you are meeting the desired goal or not. Now the prime difference between a compliance limit and a compliance mask is the limit is always the straight line as you can see, which means essentially the y-axis data point is always going to be the same. So if you have to draw some custom mask, you cannot do it with compliance limit. However, if you choose to do with compliance mask, you can have variety of options available so that you can create the mask as you are looking to design your circuit for or the interconnect line for. And especially this is very useful for people working in high speed single integrity because a lot of standards these days define the compliance limit for the insertion loss as well as certain loss. So especially those people will get benefited. However, same way, RF engineers can also get benefited out of this. So here I have a very simple schematic with a simple transmission line and two terminations. And I'm running a simulation from 100 megahertz to 10 gigahertz. Now when we go ahead and run this simulation and we do have a data display, simple thing we can do is plot NS21, which is typically the insertion loss of the channel. Now, if we are designing for certain standard and the standard specifies a certain compliance mask limit, which our interconnect will have to follow. And usually they do it in band limit. Now, those things we can easily do by going to insert mask and we can insert a polyline mask. And once we click on the graph here, we can completely customize the way we want that mask to be depending upon for what standard uh, we may be designing uh, the mask for. And this definition of the mask is clearly specified in the standard. Now you could double click on the mask after you insert and then enter your X and Y data points so that the mask will get shaped accordingly. Now you can see how compliance mask is slightly different than the compliance limit. Now you can also declare certain variables on your schematic or on the data display and you can use those variable names in x and y places often the standards will have certain formula which will govern these kind of compliant mask and create a different frequency subsegment now something similar i have already done here and you can notice i have declared a few variables uh, defining the frequency and the associated insertion loss now this data is being used in the compliance mask definition to define X points as well as the Y points. So I come up with this compliance mask and obviously my interconnect currently is failing and that's what you can see here. Now how do I do this pass and fail? Well, like pretty much shown in the last video, here is a very simple mathematics behind. PM1 here is the name of the compliance mask because whenever you insert any compliance mask, you can go ahead and give it a name. So PM1 is the name which I'm using currently for my calculation. Although compliance mask only had few discrete points, I'm using interpolation function, which is interp bracket 
the compliance masks the minimum maximum frequency and the delta which i have calculated based on how many frequency points we have in our simulation now by doing simple equations like this i end up calculating the compliance result which is either fail or pass as indicated and then in ads 2021 update 2 release i have this additional capability to enable a picture uh, which is also controlled by the decision of whether your compliance result is fail or pass and that's what i am doing here now let's go back to what is schematic where we had and let's change the spacing between these transmission lines which i know will make the compliance mask to be passed so once we go ahead and read on the simulation now we can see our s21 is better than the compliance mask and my compliance result is passed and you can see the picture here changes according to that so if you are looking to do a bit of post processing that means you only want to check pass and fail in the data display this is the technique which you can use and again if your standard is giving you any kind of equation uh, which is going to decide the y-axis value of this mask you can go ahead and insert that equation here as well instead of specifying the, the points and the associated amplitude so i leave it to you another way of doing the same level of compliance mask is we could do it in a schematic and once we are able to do it in a schematic as you can see here uh, the equations here are pretty much the same which i used in the data display with only one change and that is i'm calculating the uh, compliance mask uh, and i need to do um, you know uh, take those discrete points and I need to make a pair of them in X and Y and this is what I am doing. So you can see these are the Y points which are my limit definitions and these are my X axis frequency point and I'm using a function called VS which adds the independent data that is X axis to the Y axis and these are the points which I again declared as individual points but again, as I said, if your you know, standard requires a particular equation to be fit, you can go ahead and insert that equation. Now, the value of doing measurement equations in the schematic is that I can now use that information and define things like dB of S21 minus the compliance mask, which we just calculated. And I can use that variable to define an optimization and I want that difference to be greater than zero. That means I want my S21 to be more than the compliance mask so that I can meet the specification. And I do have an optimization here. So let's go ahead and run is as it is so that we can see what's the initial answer. Well, the initial answer here is of course fail because you can see the red trace is not respecting or not meeting that mask limit. Now I can go back to my schematic where I already have my optimization set and I'm optimizing the spacing between this line uh, between 1 and 12 uh, in the step of 0.5. That means it's a discreetly varying value, but you can choose it to be continuously varying value. Doesn't matter. And now we can go ahead and optimize this design very quickly. And now you can see within a few seconds, the error becomes zero and I have my S21 greater than the compliance mask meeting the required specification. So let's go ahead and update this design. And here you can notice at a spacing of 9.5 mil, I'm meeting the required specification. So let's go ahead and simulate it once more and look at the performance. And indeed, our interconnect is now giving us the better response as set by this compliance mask meeting the specification as per the specific standard i might be designing for so these are pretty cool things which you could do in your circuit designs or inter interconnect design using ads with very very simple equations and that's why the compliance mask as well as compliance limits are a very useful tool for any circuit designer whether he is doing rf microwave circuit applications or a high-speed signal integrity designer working towards a high-speed, um, you know, interconnect design.
So thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. I hope you find the content presented here to be useful for your work. And again, don't forget to leave your valuable comment in the comment section and look forward to see you in the next tutorial video. Till then, happy designing and take care.